Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Iceberg Lounge. I'm your host, Thomas Single, along with me in chair number two, as always, is Randy Dobbins. How are you today, Randy? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, in this episode, we're going to be going over the national championship game that happened between Alabama and Ohio State. And then afterwards, I'm going to present a D1 postseason conference rankings, ranking the conferences um, from 10 to 1 um, for my view and what I've looked at. But uh, first, let's go to a commercial break, and then we'll be right back with the national championship game discussion. And we're back. So, we're going to talk about what happened in the college football playoff national championship game um, between the University of Alabama and the... Ohio State University. The D uni- is very important. Yes. Um, so let's before we get into the stats, let's talk about some some key points coming into this game. Um, obviously, um, we had the Heisman winner, which was Smitty, and then we had three of the top five Heisman contenders. So, you had two other Heisman contenders up there with them. Um, Ohio State had 13 players not be able to make the game due to COVID. And so, they are meeting in Miami. So, the kind of the first big thing that happened in the game was the reintroduction of Waddle. Um, this would be his first game since the 24th of October versus Tennessee. How excited were you um, seeing Waddle back on the field? Because I know that the last podcast, towards the end, you uh, brought reports that he was already training for the game. And so he he played some. What do you think? Uh, I was kind of excited. But when I, I was hopped seeing him in the game, but seeing how he was limping around, I kind of wish he didn't play. Yeah, I feel like he possibly was, like, trying to force himself to play. Um, lot, I feel like a lot of players got who got injured in this game for Alabama forced themselves to play when they shouldn't have. Yeah, um, which the player I'm about to bring up, actually was told to go out there, but it was, okay, so Dickerson. So, he was injured, and he came out, he was one of the captains, or the captain, um, at the beginning of the game, and it was just so funny seeing how big he was compared to Ohio State's captain. Yeah, there, I've seen, like, a uh, thing on, uh, I think it was Twitter, and it was like uh, talking about how it was like uh, they're uh, they it makes them seem like they're bigger than what they are. Like the camera makes them seem bigger than what they are. Yeah. And then you see Dickerson towering over the Ohio State captain. Yeah, and. Uh, it was just so cool because he wasn't even like he he geared up, but like to my knowledge, he was just geared up to be geared up. Um, and then at the end of the game, he was told to go in, and he didn't know he was about to go in for the victory formation. Yeah, and just seeing him walk out there and like everyone hugging him, and it's just like. Yeah, you know, excited for him to be out there for at least uh, to play in the game. Oh, hold on, and so it was just exciting to see Dickerson see, go out. Yeah, and see everyone just so, so excited that he's going to actually be able to say he played in the game. Oh, yeah. Um, and like, then I got chills from that. 
Yeah, it was it was nice seeing that and just having him like when when they ended up winning, he was carrying Saban in the middle of the field like he was a child. He he carried Nick Saban like Nick Saban like Nick Saban was a two foot toddler. Yeah, like it like it was insane how tall and strong that man is. Yeah, and then I don't. If you look at the uh, look back at it where he was carrying him, Nick Saban like pats him on the shoulder and says, "Put me down." Yeah, put me down. <laughs> oh man! But, but the whole the whole point of him while he was carrying him, Saban had the biggest smile on his face. Oh yeah. Um, some cameras actually caught him like straight up crying. Yeah, during the presentation. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, um, anything within the game that you would uh, think kind of stood out? Mac Jones breaking, uh, setting the uh, passing record, not only for the CFP, for the comfort, uh, college football playoffs, but for also the BCS. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, like 464, 64. which is insane. And this is his, what, fifth? Four- Fourth or fifth time passing for over 400. Yeah. And then Smith, uh, good old Slim Reaper setting the, uh, setting the, uh, record for most, uh, I think it was receptions and t- for a touchdown. Yeah. He one it, half. Yeah. He, uh, it's a receptions. Was a record of twelve receiving touchdowns. Not re- only in the college football uh, college football game, but he also set the most receiving. Uh, I think it was the most receiving, re- uh, most touchdowns by the receiver in SEC history as well. Yeah, because he did three receiving touchdowns. Um, he did nineteen punt returns. Um, and the only other person tied with him with that would be McCole Hardman from the Alabama versus uh, Georgia game for the national championship. And so, like, Alabama set so many records that night. Yeah. Um, just, just to go over a few, uh, most points by a winning team. Uh, was was Alabama at fifty two? Um, the largest margin of victory uh, with twenty eight, but that's also shared with Clemson. Um, we already talked about the passing yards. Fewest hey. fewest total yards allowed was three hundred and forty one. That was a record set. And I would like to point out for those who say Al- that A and M should have been in the score for the national championship game it was the exact same score for Alabama versus Texas A&M yeah and I I just like I was saying last last podcast I still don't understand the hype behind them like they lost to Alabama why would you put someone who already lost to a contender in a playoff game unless unless it was like the Notre Dame Clemson situation yeah um or it was a at conference championship game where it was very close down to the end. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. Uh, Mac Jones uh, got five passing touchdowns, which is tied for the most with Joe Burrow. Um, you already talked about. Smitty with the receiving touchdowns and the receptions. Um, and then you had uh, Tough Borland with 14 tackles. But that that game was just chalk full of just record after record after record. Um, and then let's let's not forget um, Ray Chard. Our our kicker who hadn't missed oh. all 
season. Hey, I just want to point out, it's Riker. Riker? Okay, Riker. Yes. Will, but hadn't uh, Will missed Riker. all season. No, not one extra point and still lost the uh, kicking award to the kicker from Miami. And that's just, I don't know, I feel like he deserved that because yeah. we finally have a kicker. Alabama has always, if we had any weakness when it comes to I will say the team, it would probably be a, a kicker. Since, uh, I'm trying to think of his name. He played a few years ago for Alabama at kicker. It was, uh. Was it the one uh, that his dad was also a kicker? No, it, it, it was after him. Oh, the one who got all those death threats. No, he, he, mm, uh, I'm trying to think. I can't think of his name, but that he was a, our last good one. Yeah, um, but Alabama won fifty-two to twenty-four. Um, they are a three-time college football playoff national champ, which I think that's a record for the most. It is, um, and they are eighteen-time national champions overall now. Um. So they are legal. Now, here's here's a question I'm going to bring up, and I feel like it's the time to ask this: Is this the best Saban football team he has produced to Alabama? Yes, I believe it is. All, I, as I well. would automatically before you got that question out. Yes, I think the only other team that could touch it would be O nine versus Texas. Yeah. Um. Because even even Saban, like there was just something different about this team. Like it was stacked beyond what it usually was. By the way, Mac Jones' efficiency records for this season holds the single season pass efficiency rating, which is two o two hundred three point one, and also the single season pass completion uh, record which is 77.4 percent mm. for the first record I told you about guess who's uh, the other two who number two was Joe Burrow and number three is two with Oh, and the uh, second record for the pass completion the second one is Colt McCoy in 2008 yeah from Texas, who was the quarterback who played against Alabama in 09. And, and I, number, I, and I number look, three is Joe ahead. Burrow. Yeah, Joe Burrow. Like, like I was saying, like, this team just had something different about it. Like, and I think Saban kind of knew it too, and that might be why he was so emotional as well, because, like, this team went – through the Southeastern Conference, had nothing but conference games, had cross play to the other side of the conference, won first that. Time, also, the first time in SEC history that a team has gone uh, undefeated in like yeah, regular season play, or not regular season play, play, but you know what I mean. Yeah, and then. Goes on and takes out. Um, who did they play again? Was it Notre Dame? Notre Dame in the yeah took took them out. Which you know, I that kind of made me feel like we needed someone else besides Notre Dame in there because it it was it was quite a lead. And then they come and win. By four touchdowns. Before the game, I said they were going to win at least by three. Before the game even started. Just because of what I heard with the reports of the 13 uh, positive COVID players. Which we wish them the best recovery. Um, 
But do you think that if they would have had those 13 players, it would have been different? No. No? Not at all. I think it might have been closer than it was. Yeah, but Alabama still would have beat them. Yeah. Those starters. And, and so, I want to so, point out. Go ahead. That is, if you take into account of all active NCAA D1 college football coaches by their natties, out Nick Saban the, has five more than who is in second place. Mm, and isn't that Dabo? Dabo at two. Yeah, that's the only person close enough to him. And you have Ed Osheron, Mac Brown, Les Miles, and Jimbo Fisher all have one. And then Dabo has two, and Saban has seven. Man. And, and the playoffs started in 2014. Mm-hmm. That seven years of national champ, uh, college football playoffs na- national championships, right? Yeah. Alabama has almost half. And see, here's something interesting. If you go back and kind of put the playoff era with the bowl era, the bowl championship era, the BCS, if you look from, I believe, 2006 on whenever the Southeastern Conference streak started, right, all the way till now, all right, so you had 06 to 2021. There have only been four teams out of the Southeastern Conference to be national champions since the mid-2000s. Yeah, Ohio State. Yeah, Ohio State, Clemson. Clemson. Florida State. Florida State. And is there one more? No, because I think Clemson won two. Yeah, Clemson's won two. And the other two won one apiece. Yeah. Because I know Auburn was the one who lost to make the streak broken. Yeah. Which was to Florida State. Yeah, which was the Florida State. But I just find that amazing that even though it's not really a streak, there's only been four other national champions, which really it's just three teams that have been out of the Southeastern Conference that have won. Yeah, and if you really think about it, almost every every national championship since 2006 – uh, all of them but one has had a SEC team in it since 2006. That's insane. And the only one that wasn't that I know of was 2014, which was Ohio State versus Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So that is fifth. In fifteen years, only one national champ only one national championship hasn't had a SEC team in it. And this like and when I made um because in the next segment we're gonna be I'm gonna be showing my postseason conference rankings for this year. Like I'm not putting bias in any of this. I, I but I know I'm probably gonna get some hate on it, but um, going to the next thing. That championship game um, finally put Saban over national championship-wise over Bear Bryant over all national championships. Yeah. Count Nella shoes in there. See, my thing is, he has seven national championships, which does put him over Bear Bryant. But I would only count the six he's won at Alabama. So, I, to me, he still needs to win one more. See, to me, I feel like he doesn't. Because, like, I just feel like you should count that LSU one. Because national championships are national championships, no matter yeah. where you win them. Um, but I can see where you're coming from as an Alabama fan. Um, where it's just like, you know, 
Bear won all of his at Bama. So Saban has to win at least one more at Alabama to kind of surpass him as national championships at Alabama-wise. Yeah. Yeah, I I get what you're coming from. And honestly, I think he will do it because I I see Saban still being there for at least another 10 years. I see him at Alabama for at least maybe a decade, decade and a half. And this might seem crazy, but let's say we go with my average of of uh, 10 years. I I think out of those 10 years, he could probably get another – two, three national championships under his belt. Yeah. And that's that's me being conservative about it because I've also said he might also could get like four or five. Yeah. Just with how he's doing from now to when he got here. Yeah. Um. But well, I don't know if you had seen this, but there was a touching moment between Matt Jones and Paul Tyson. Really, you know who's the who's who's the who is the backup to uh, Mac? Yeah, he is uh, Bear Bryant's grandson. Huh. Let me look up to see who the backup was this year to make sure to double check. Yeah, because because I think Paul Tyson. Am I right about that? About him being the grandson of Bear? Yeah, it is. It's uh, Brosh Young who I was thinking of. Brosh Young. There we go. Okay, so Brosh Young is the backup to Mac. Yeah. There was a touching moment where Mac had the, I think, game ball. And he handed it to Bryce Young and said, it's yours now. Oh, man. Yeah. That was nice. Kind of like a... Passing of the torch. Yeah, yeah, passing of the torch, if you will. And and that's going to mean something more because when Alabama comes back and he is the starter, I mean... You're leading a team that your grandpa coached over and won six national championships with. Bryce like, Young isn't Barry Bryant's grandson. That's uh, uh, the other one we were talking about. Oh, yeah, my bad. That's my bad. But, but okay, so that will be interesting. I, I haven't heard much on his backup at all. Have you? Yeah. Not really. He's, from what I'm looking at, this is from Sporting News. Uh, it says the true freshman hasn't had much opportunity to contribute to Bama's incredible offense in 2020, but has shown flashes of brilliance while completing 13 of uh, 22 passes for 156 yards and a touchdown. Okay, so he has a little. So, um, just, I mean, 13 out of 10, that's over half, and that's not bad, 156 yards. Exactly. Um, so, before we kind of, uh, before I kind of stop and um, plug some things, um, here's some questions for the listeners. Um, do you think that this is the best Saban team at Alabama in his Alabama era? And do you think that he still needs to win one more to be considered greater than Bear? Or do you want to count all the national championships? Um, go to anchor.com uh, slash Stasberg Lounge. You can leave us a voicemail. And if you do, we might play it in the next episode. Um, or go to our social medias and tag it in there. And then we might do a, a little comment, little episode about it. I have an interesting stat to tell you. All right, throw it out It's kind of it's off topic, but it's still on the topic of football. All right. So I have the NFL fact for you. Okay. So you know Tom Brady left the AFC to come down to the Bucks, who are in the NFC. Mm-hmm. So NFC championship appearances since 1997. Tom Brady now has one, and the Dallas Cowboys have zero. Oh. Oh, wow. Years in the NFC since 97. Tom Brady, one. Cowboys, 24. Man, that's insane. And a lot of people are going to be so mad if he wins down 
with Tampa. And it's actually in Tampa this year. Exactly, because it's just like that that pretty much almost means you're guaranteed a championship if you have Brady. Yeah. Because he's already being touted as the greatest of all time in the NFL. Yeah, because he has six. And so now he's kind of in the same boat as saving to win his seventh if he goes to the Super Bowl. Yeah, which is insane. Um, So let me go ahead and stop right here. Um, And we're going to plug some things, and then we'll go on to the next segment. Um, If you would like, if you like video games and other stuff, go to Iceberg Gaming on on YouTube. Actually, no, scratch that. Go to Thomas R.J. Engel on YouTube and subscribe. Go to K-Town Gaming also on YouTube and subscribe. Um, we, uh, I do, I have games on there that I play. I'm doing an Arkham series right now. Come and watch it. Um, Randy has done a SpongeBob series, and he's also working on a Marvel Avengers game series on his channel. Uh, I have I post old podcasts on YouTube, so if you're on there, you want to listen to an older podcast, and you don't want to necessarily listen to it on any podcasting platform. We're uploading stuff on there. Um, also, if you want more of the Iceberg Gaming Show, but not necessarily on YouTube, I stream on Twitch Thursdays and Fridays. At 8 p.m. until whenever. Usually till 10, but you never know. We might go longer. Um, Usually, Randy's there with me. So, come join us and follow us there. Um, If you want to support this show and support Iceberg Gaming and Iceberg Gaming on Twitch TV, go to patreon.com slash trji. And for a dollar a month, you can become a VIP and get all the content first before anyone else. Um, and finally, if you are in to music and you are on Spotify, go on Spotify, look up Real Music Radio, and I have a list that is 40 plus hours of the best, the realest music you can find. Go follow it, listen to some good music. But besides that, let's move on to the postseason conference rankings um, that I kind of put together. So, basically, Division One is broke down into the Power Five and the Grouper Five, or what I call the G5. Um, but this top ten list puts both of them together – with their co- their overall conference record, and I also take in consideration their best team in that conference's record as well. And so, as I'm going, you can comment however you want, Randy. Um, so, starting in last place. To me, for the 2021 20, season, the worst conference in D1 NCAA football is the Pac-12. Yeah. Um, They went 32-33, and and their best team record was a 5-1 USC, who wasn't even their conference champ. Number nine is the Mountain West, who went 40-42, and and their best team was a 6 and 0 San Jose State. Now, while you're asking if I put uh, undefeated down right next to last, it's cuz they're 6 and 0. They didn't have enough wins. There's more teams that have better wins, I feel, um and more wins that even have losses than San Jose State. So, That's why I put Mountain West at number nine. At number eight, we have the Conference USA. Their record was 52 and 63. Their best team was a seven and three Marshall, Um, which 
that isn't even their conference champ. Their conference champ this year was UAB, if I remember correctly. By the way, uh, one of Alabama's uh, coaches, I can't remember what specifically he does. Like, it's one of their, like, assistant coaches or I, I can't remember what his position is on the coaching staff, but he is going to be the head coach at Marshall. Interesting. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then, um, and then you have Steve Sarkeesian is going to Texas, and he's taking one of the uh, another guy with him. Yeah, yeah, he's taking he's taking a guy with him. So this, so Saban's losing a quarterback, um, and four other, and three other major players. Then he's having to rebuild his coaching staff as well, which. He seems like he does every year anyway. So it should be interesting to see how Alabama is going to start the 2021-22 season when it comes to all this rebuilding they're going to have to do on both sides. Um, so number seven is the MAC Conference. Um, they went 34-32. and 32. Their best team was a 7-1 Ball State. Um, number six of five. Um, well, let's go with number six. Number six. <laughs> this is going to make people mad, but it's the Big Ten. Yeah. I put the Big Ten at number six. They went 53 and 52. Um, their best, play, uh, best team is a 7-1 and one Ohio State. Who, yes, they were in the national championship, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the conference is good. Uh, yes, you have what th- uh, two teams in a national championship in like th- what three times out of the seven? Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't make you the best conference. Because only uh, one of those teams won exactly. the championship. Exactly. So, it, the Big Ten, number six. And so, now we're going to start the top five. At the bottom of the top five, I put the Big 12. Um, they went 55-47. and 47, And their best team was a 9-2 and two Oklahoma. Um, and they're like, but why did you put them over the Big Ten? Ohio State was in the national championship. They were undefeated going into the national championship. Yes, but Oklahoma had more wins. They had two more wins, and they only had one. They they're they're also a much better looking team. Than exactly, Ohio State. and so I put them at the bottom of the top five. So number four is the AAC, the American Conference. And they went 53-52 and 52 this year as a conference. And their top team was a 9-1 and one Cincinnati. Um, to me, Cincinnati was up there. And to me, should have at least been number five. Yeah, number five. Going into the championship game. Um, the American Conference, as over the past few years, have been proven that they should be getting a shot more and more. And um, I believe that we should look for a a um, a G five conference at some point to be in in the playoffs at least within the next couple years. What you know? What they should do? Cincinnati needs to make a shirt that says "We were rubbed up." Ah, uh, for real, that would have been, been nice. That, that would have been funny. I would have enjoyed that. Yeah, that I that's, bought that's a shirt. Funny. Um, and so number three is the ACC. Uh, they went eighty-three and eighty. And they had two teams tying for their best team record. 
and that was a ten and two Clemson and Notre Dame. Clemson and Notre Dame. So that was number three going in there. Um, number two uh, is going to be controversial, and I feel like they are deserving. Uh, the number two best conference to me this year, this season, was the Sun Belt. Um, they went fifty nine and fifty four, and they had an eleven and one Coastal Carolina that I believe should have replaced Notre Dame or Clemson won in the playoff. I think that it should have been Alabama, Ohio State, Cincinnati, like Coastal it, Carolina. Like to me, Coastal Carolina, if it wasn't for the COVID that they had, they they should have been in the playoffs. But then again, they're in a disadvantage already because they're in the G five. And that's the problem. Is if you're in the one of the conferences in the G five you have to prove yourself not only one year, but multiple years to even get a possible shot. And I feel like that's wrong considering in my top five, you have two G5 conferences in there. The American Conference again, and then the Sun Belt. The the ones that aren't in the uh, Power Five need more like love given to them because like they're always like oh they don't play nobody well yeah you know what they don't play nobody because nobody and see uh, I kind of I kind of have this kind of idea of before we get to the number one um okay so in soccer um hopefully is if there's any fans um listening that are fans of soccer as well if I'm wrong about this, correct me because I'm I'm not really big into soccer. But in their leagues, they move teams up and down based on how good they are in these different leagues. And so I think that would be a good implementation in the D1 to keep it fresh. Have have the two groups, a G five and a P five league. Right, like it is now, except for if you're good uh-huh. in the G five, you have a possibility to move up to the Power Five, and that will make teams in the Power Five more motivated to keep their conference up there. Yeah, because you do have you. Yeah, you do have these uh, conferences that are good, but some aren't. What I, what I would suggest is something like that, but instead of the conferences moving up, I would say take these schools that are like your Coastal Carolinas, your Cincinnati's, move, and remove them up to these conferences and take whatever school is the worst. And, and replace you know what? Those that, that, that would sound great. Like if we took uh, – yeah, put Vandy Vanderbilt, in for like, example. The AAC or the Sun Belt, or yeah, the and, Sun then, Belt. and then move up like a Coastal Carolina to replace them. Like that, yeah. that would, I think that would help a lot of more people saying that they don't get a shot. I think that would help like quiet those accusations down. Um, Because it's like, well, yeah. get a better team and you'll move up the rankings and move up the different conferences. Um, But our number one conference to me this 2021 20, season is the Southeastern Conference. They went 76 and 71, and their best team was a 13 and 0 University of Alabama. Who's the only thirteen and O school in Division One? Um, this year, this year, this year. Um, yeah. and so, like I said, the worst conference, the Pac-12, the best conference, the Southeastern Conference, 
and the middle conference, kind of in the middle of everyone, um, would be the Big 12. I have another interesting uh, right, stat for there. you about the NFL. I want you, uh, Tom Brady has played in a co- the conference championship game 66% of his career. And he's only missed out, let's see, one, two, three, four. Five times. That's insane. He's only missed out five times. Because 01, 03, 04, wait, see. One, two, three, four, five. Six, no, six times. You have 01, he, he went in 01, 03, 04, 06, 7. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 mm. in 2020. Only missed it six times. Think, think about that, though. Has only missed the conference championship six times since Brady's been playing since like, since like 2001, basically. Oh, like he's man. only missed it six times. And another interesting stat about Brady is he's played in our conference championship game since in every decade since oh, wow. 2000. So that's the three decades that he's played Man. in a conference championship. He has a long career. I didn't even realize that till now. Yeah. And he was like drafted. Oh, like, man. Well... that's going to be the end for this podcast i hope y'all enjoyed it uh don't forget if you're listening to this and you're new uh or if you always listen make sure to hit that follow so that way you can get notifications and our new episodes in your feed always um we love hearing your comments so comment send us voicemails and uh yeah we'll see you in the next episode uh Always know that God loves you and that I love you. And always remember all to God. See y'all in the next one.